Я до холостой. Oh, here we go. Okay, did you see where it says? Join with video? Join with video, there you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Says mute, says mute. We're too close over here. Should I get over here? Hello? Yes. Hello. There Hello. You is Ava. This, so you see uh, the waiting room on the side? You see how the stuff pops up? Yep, I see it. Okay, perfect. Um, and then the only other thing you'll have to do is just prepare to go live. Just do all the steps right now. Click the bottom button that says more and then go okay. through all those little couple steps. This way, when Gary says, okay, let's start the meeting, you can click go live and then you'll be ready oh. to go because you can get Thank up you, to Sarah. all those steps. Okay. Yeah. That's what I did today as well. Can you uh, stay on the phone so just make sure I get this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not going to do it. Crawford, Bright Town Park, next. Yep. Yep. Okay, it says preparing. <clears throat> How did the meeting go, Saga? Um, right down Park? It was, it was all over the place. <laughs> it's hard. It's, it went quick, though. Okay. Yeah, thank God. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to put the title. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, town council meeting, June 16th. Just go back to your Zoom screen real quick and peek to see the waiting room because there might be people waiting to get in. Oh, got it. Okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Stay calm. It's fine. What do you got there? I see Shelly Mayer. <clears throat> oh, Shelly's waiting. <laughs> Hi, Shelly. <laughs> muted yourself, Neva. Did you mean to mute yourself? Um, yes, I did. Oh, actually, I can hear you. Even though it says you're muted, I can hear you. Um, yeah, Hope's computer. <clears throat> so I already have the uh, Facebook set up, so all I have to do is just click on go live, right? Exactly, and then it just takes a couple seconds to load. Um, so all you have to do right now is just keep an eye on the waiting room and just let everybody in. Okay. I'll stay on until you guys start, just in case you have questions, Neva, and then I'll, I'll hop off. Okay, thank you. Away. 
I just need to unmute a little bit. So if they ask me questions, I'll just go here from here. <clears throat> Shelly's looking. <laughs> Wait, Shelly. Neva, uh, Neva, I'm confused because your your thing says you're muted. Did, what are you trying to do there? Are you trying to be She's muted? Still alive. Yeah, um, because if I had my unmuted, um, Hope and I are in the same room, so we heard an echo, so I mute, I put mute on mine. I see. Okay. Got it. So you hear me, but it's from Hope's computer. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, I gotcha. Anyone in the waiting room? Mm -hmm. No, I don't see anyone so far. We're waiting. <laughs> Shelly's here. <laughs> How are you doing, Hope? I miss seeing you. I know. It's been a while. I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. coming back to Port Chester. You are. Tired of being home. I know. It's difficult. Yes. It gets... <laughs> you lose track of what day it is, but I don't know you. You have such a busy schedule. <laughs> I have no idea what day it is. Yeah. No, nobody knows. You have to look at the calendar. I know. <laughs> I was happy the hairdressers were open. That was like my big. Oh, I know. <laughs> it was fantastic. How long was your hair? Long and three months worth. Of <laughs> like, right? Gray and hair. And, oh, terrible. <laughs> Yours looks so good. I was just thinking that's what I was thinking. Of. <sighs> Have you been going in the office, Hope? Yes. Yeah, because. You need to. I'm considered essential with the uh, uh, death and burial permits yeah, and, death and burial. Yeah. That, yeah, from and crematory and so we alternate the staff like one week I'm in another oh, week. Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. My, my office is coming back in a few people at a time starting next, I think next week. Yeah, I saw Rachel. Yeah, she was there. Already and Emiliana. They were the yeah, Emiliana, in. right. Yeah. Well, we're following the protocol, and I, I think it's working for people in New York. Oh, I think we're doing I that. Mm -hmm. I agree. Oh, Vic's here. Hi, Vic. Hope. <laughs> Hope, people I are um, check, check. What? Sorry, Victor. Um, Hope, check the side of your of your screen. Do you have a waiting room by chance on the side of your Zoom? Because people are emailing me asking to get in, but I I'm not. Neva, the other thing you could do is uh, make me the host. Okay. Um, if you ho click on participants. Okay. And then you'll see my phone number. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I can't be, I can't be the host. There's no one in the waiting room? Um, there's no one in the waiting room. I just let in Victoria and Vic in. Mm -hmm. Where's uh, Debbie and Gary. Gary? Gary and Pam and Jill? Yep. <laughs> and Tommy. You, you see them? No. Yeah, uh, Pamela just emailed me. I see. Oh, I see. Good. Nick. Nick just came in. <laughs> no, I'm here. Hi, Nikki. How are you? We're fine. Hello. 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 Shelly's Hello. been here for a while. She gave That's us right. her. Hey, Vic. She gave us our presentation. <laughs> yeah. Did you... I miss you, Shelly? Hi, Shelly. How are you? I'm good. No, you didn't miss. I didn't do anything. Thank you. Well, Gary. Hello, Shelly. Haven't seen you in a while. No. Ah. I've been hiding. I'm the ghost. <laughs> We're all coming out. We had a nice, we had an opportunity to get reacquainted <laughs> yeah. before the meeting started. Right. 
Shelly, before the meeting starts, I've been meaning to call you. Um, Hi, Debbie. I, I need to talk to you and Steve. Uh, okay. I've been discussing it with the senior staff, especially Nick, Hope, and Debbie. We have not been taking any cash in our tax collections. And it's been going really smoothly. Um, do you know if there's any prohibition or do we need legislation to keep that going? In other words, we do not want to take cash uh, for taxes any longer. We've been fine the know. way it is. Yeah, no, I can, I can imagine. I don't know the answer. Let me look. And uh, I think it's a pretty clear answer one way or the other, Gary. And if we have to make a change, but l let's look at what the rule is. I don't know what the rule is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I sent out to the Receivers Association, but I haven't heard back yet, Gary. Oh, I'm still waiting. We discussed that. Because yeah, we can, but yeah, but fine. That legislation is probably the better way to go. I think that everybody is uh, very happy not handling the cash. I'm for sure. Two, for two reasons. Number one, during this COVID crisis, cash is dirty. Mm -hmm. It's the dirtiest thing you could touch. You don't, you don't know where it's coming from. And secondly, it's dangerous to keep cash on hand, we have sometimes thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in cash during tax collection, which is dangerous. Yeah. We've we've installed a system whereby we have a, a safe that, that that's a smart safe that gets picked up by Brinks, but people might not know, know that and, and they could look at the town of Rye and any other receiver's office as an easy knockoff place. Can you can you bring a money? We have no police protection there either. Yeah. Other towns police nearby. We don't. What did you ask, Shelley? Can you use a money order? Of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh sure. We yeah. take we have all forms of payment. We have checks, personal checks, money orders, internet payments, credit card payments. Pay any way you want. Well, I just have that would be an issue just that people who don't have any of those things could be able to get a money order. They could get a money order. Fine. I think I'll, right. I'll look, I'll look tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Sean. Tonight and get back to you again. All right. I've been meaning to call you about that for about three weeks. Now that I see you. Anytime. I'm reminded. Anytime. <laughs> um, do we have everybody? Hi, Neva. Hi, uh, I've got notes from uh, Jeff and Jill that they're having trouble getting in. So, um, Neva, would you please resend um, the Zoom invitation to the uh, town council, please? Sure. I just, I, I just did, Neva. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And also to Jeffrey Bender. I did. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure where Pam is. She had emailed me that she was difficult, had difficulty getting in. I, and I also included her in my invite. Got it. But I see Victoria from the Westmore News. Yes. Okay. The, pr the okay. press is Pam? here. Hi, Victoria. Hi. Hello. Pam's here. Thank God. I feel unloved. <laughs> Literally sat through the entire Parks Council meeting and I can't get into ours. And uh, and under your photo is oh William. Shit. I'm William Morrow. Sorry, um, <laughs> I need to leave. I'll be back. <laughs> no. I can't be William Morrow. I'll be back. Who is William like, Morrow? For public, the publisher. Oh, the publisher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Harper Collins. Oh. Hi, Camille again. Tell us. <laughs> Hi there. Are you outside? Um, I'm on my back porch. Yeah, oh, looks nice. very nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. I think I'll go outside. <laughs> well, my grandchildren are here, so this is the quietest place to oh, be. Yeah. Oh, I understand. Hi. Right. Uh, uh,
anyone in the waiting room? No, I think there was just a mix up with the link. Um, I've forwarded it to everyone again. Mm -hmm. Sarah, I heard that the the uh, Board of Assessment Review went very smoothly today. I got a call from one of the bar members. Mm. That's very exciting. I, I took a moment in between our meetings to uh, to tune into the Facebook. So it was it seemed to be going very smoothly. So I watched the live broadcast. Shelley? Yes. The way we were doing the Board of Assessment Review. Yes. Um, we're probably the most advanced town in Westchester. All of our grievances were able to be filed if they so choose on the internet, right on the website. Fantastic. They just had to go to their, their property and click on their property and the grievance form. And the whole grievance form was pre-filled for them. Wow. They just had to put in the number they thought that the property was worth. Right. And hit send. Um, if they had documents to upload, they could upload it at that time. For example, comparables. Yeah. If uh, they wanted to upload later, they had the ability to do that as well. Did you, have, did you need new software or are you just... Yes. Yes. The... Uh, Denise, our assessor, worked with, um, with was it KVS she worked with? What was it called? SDG? No, SDG. SDG she worked with. Mm -hmm. And they developed the software and it was totally seamless. That's fantastic. And, and we're never going back. No. People could still mail it in or hand it in. We have a Dropbox outside the office so we don't have to handle it. Uh, or email, download They're, the form right. themselves and email it if they want. Mm -hmm but it's a totally seamless operation. They're conducting their hearings on Zoom. All of the appointments, usually they would line up outside the, the room. Yeah. All the appointments are on Zoom. They pre, uh, everybody made it, they have a 10 minute appointment window. They could set up their appointments on the internet so they know when they were scheduled and the controller would let them in right from the waiting room they make their their right. presentation yeah and the next one would would flow through it's we were worried about that part of it but apparently it's totally seamless and easy that's fantastic you really okay. I'm, i must say you're you're quite ahead of the curve here in many ways I, so that's one of the things about this yeah. job you see how other all the municipalities deal with these issues I know we we try to be we try to be ahead. Actually, we try to flatten the curve. <laughs> Can we do that? Okay. Are we are we all on? Is Tommy on? I, I don't see, see Lindsay. I don't see Tommy. I, I'm here. No, Tommy. Oh. No, Tommy. Can you hear me? Can Jill? I hear you. Lindsay, Hi. I hear Hi, you, Jill. but do not okay. see you. Hold on. Dave, you got in. You're good. I got in, yes. Oh, okay. I think, Hi, Jared, is, this, is, this, is this your first time on Zoom, Dave? No, it's my second time, but the, the, there was a disconnect with, with the meeting ID with emails. Oh. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Lindsay's on. Debbie, uh, does somebody want to call Tommy? Tommy's working on getting on. He's, he's trying. Hi, Hello, Senator. How are you? Hi, Lindsay. Nice to see you. Good to see you too. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's really exciting. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> I'm calling Tom. And aren't you surprised you, you don't have a race, huh? Me? I do. You have a race? In the general, not in the primary, yeah. Oh, okay. We're not talking politics, so. <laughs> well, we're not online yet, except for Victoria. Victoria's maintaining, this is all off the record, Victoria. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, let's wait for Tommy Thanks, then Jill. we'll start. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Hope oh, I've been talking to Pam and there's been an email going on about doing an outdoor movie night. 
And one of the ideas we had was asking people who attend to bring like something for the food bank or, you know, for a food bank. And we're right. thinking of uh, Salvation Army. I know they're in need. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, they've been so if really you busy. Be yeah, if you want to be looped in. We still it's can't actually, coordinate yeah. schedules. But. Lizzie, I think we need to know your availability so we can schedule. Yeah, I, know, I don't know my availability, but I'm thinking maybe next Tuesday. Wait, that, uh, or we'll, I'll look at my calendar tonight. <laughs> next Tuesday is the 20th. 20th. Mm -hmm. There's this whole cottage industry. And they have nothing on that night. That's exciting. That never happens. <laughs> I know. So then maybe we'll leave it at nothing. <laughs> and uh, Van, I'll take a look. Vans oh, are that'd be fine. Um, projecting movies on the side of their, there's like these mobile drive-in, Yeah. Uh, you know, vendors that are out there now. Oh, how about that? Smart. That Smart. would be great, Lindsay. Thank you for thinking of the Army. <laughs> I was telling Lindsay that I was reading an article in the Washington Post, and I sent it to her too, but about um, a bar in New Hampshire that's done drive-in concerts. So you buy your ticket is two parking spots, so one for your car and one for your party with their chairs. So every party is separated by a car, <laughs> and it just seems so smart. So I thought we can do that on the lawn yes. and profit, but it seems smart. <laughs> Cinnamon's here. Hello, Cinnamon. Cinnamon's here. Yes, there's Cinnamon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? There, there he is. Hello. Hello, Tommy. Hi, Tom. I had the wrong Hello. information. We all did. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Too bad. All right. All right. Apologies for that. All right. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, let us start. <laughs> is, is the public in? All right. Uh, well, Debbie, you're silent. That was kind of nice for a change. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, welcome everybody to the um, Rye Town Council meeting of J June 16th, 2020. Um, I'm going to ask our guest, Senator Shelley Mayer, to lead us in the pledge, which is behind Debbie. There's the flag. Go ahead, Shell. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America. America. and to the republic, republic for which it stands, which it stands, which it stands one nation under God, under God, God, visible, liberty, and justice for all. Well, I must say, that was a raggedy tag. That was wrong. That was wrong. I'm going to mute myself because I've, I've got a few dogs that are going to be barking. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do the minutes after. I just uh, mm -hmm. let let us introduce our state senator, Shelley Mayer. We welcome you, Senator, and um, for your presentation, the floor is yours to say whatever you would like to say for as thank long as you'd like to say it. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor, and thank you to the council members and everyone else who's on. And I do miss being at 222 Grace Church Street and seeing some of you more frequently, uh, but we'll be back. Uh, I, I do appreciate the opportunity just to uh, brief people on some of the things that are happening at the state level. I always have to start by explaining that during the pandemic, and I think this is obvious, the governor was granted extraordinary powers at the onset. And so when people say, well, why don't you, you, you the legislature should decide this or that. And we granted the governor an enormous amount of power to basically uh, drive the agenda during this period, which some people thought was the excessive. I thought it was correct given the severity of the problems we faced and we needed a single person to be decisive and to get us to the other side. And while I've disagreed uh, from time to time with some of the decisions and I've certainly made my voice heard, I think that um, his leadership has helped get us to this point. Now, it's a, it's, it's, we've never been down this path before, so of course there's going to be things that we all agree and disagree with. But the legislature still does have an important role in many respects, and I thought I would go over both some of the things we've done recently, a little bit about the state's finances, because that is so important to every uh, you know, town, village, and city. And, we're facing a very, very substantial state deficit. And I think you all know that. 
we adopted a balanced budget on time. We did so um, acknowledging we already had a shortfall and therefore we could not do what we wished with so many things where we wanted to have more money like aid to municipalities, additional infrastructure funds uh, for roads and bridges, certainly for me as the chair of education, more school funding where we kept flat to last year. But since that time, of course, the budget has gotten worse. And the division of the budget has projected a budget deficit of uh, basically over $12 billion, $13.3 billion in the coming fiscal year, in the current fiscal year. And we granted the governor the authority to propose cuts to meet this reduced uh, revenue at three times during the year. The first time has already passed and he could put cuts on the table and he's talked about it. Uh, I believe he's deferring with the hope that the federal government comes through with significant amounts of money. The House passed a very substantial bill which not only would help the state and schools but would help municipalities directly. And I think that's so important. We do want money to come directly to municipalities to make up for the loss of tax and sales tax and property tax revenue. But the problem is that with this shortfall, the governor has the power to propose a cut. We have 10 days as the legislature to go back and argue about what should be cut, but we can't say that nothing should be cut. We can sort of reallocate the cuts. But I think you have seen that he has said more recently that he would cut schools by 20%, healthcare by 20%, and he's also now said that he would reduce aid to localities by 8.2 billion, which is a huge amount to cut from municipalities and the services that you depend on. So um, we're very, very concerned about that and have spent a good deal of time pressing our federal representatives to make sure that we get as much as we can. That is the place where there is money and where we need money and certainly uh, so far the House bill is quite good to New York, but we need a Senate bill and then for President Trump to sign it. So we have, have a way to go on that, but we are working on that. But obviously very concerned and realistic that cuts in my opinion are on the horizon somewhere in the near future, as unfortunate as it seems, because the state has lost so much revenue as our economy sort of tanked in a very short time. So that is one thing I, I wanted to address briefly. And I wanted to jump to the issue of some of the um, things that we have done recently. We did go back about a month ago and a package of COVID related bills, all of which were based on the premise they couldn't cost money because there wasn't any and they had to be COVID related. So we did some housing related bills that protected a very small subset of people with federal money, not state money, which would go to landlords when, land, when renters could not afford their rent. I think very few people in the town would be affected by this. This is for extremely low income people whose percentage of um, their rent became absolutely like over 50% because of their loss of income. <clears throat> It's an imperfect situation. It was an effort to deal with the problem, but we did a number of other things, of course, against price gouging and other COVID related bills. Then um, after the death of uh, Mr. Floyd, obviously there was a movement to do a number of bills related to improving the relationship between our police departments and particularly communities of color I would say that I did reach out to the Association of Police Chiefs in Westchester. We did have some conversations because obviously they opposed and had concerns with some of the bills that we did. Uh, I also met with the police unions and I've always had a very good relationship with the police and I think so many of our police have done an excellent job. But institutionally, I did think we needed to make some changes and I also acknowledge that I have been wrong in thinking that some of the incremental things that many of our departments had done were good enough, but I don't think, I think I was incorrect about that. So we voted for a series of bills, 10 bills. They've all now been signed by the governor. 
I, I think the ones you've probably heard about are removing 50A, which really protects disciplinary files, not only of police, corrections, and fire from ever, basically ever being disclosed. And now they are subject to the freedom of information law with additional protections for private and medical information. So we beefed up mm -hmm. the protections to guard against the risk that people's families would and their address would be made public, that their children's names, those kinds of things. At the same time, uh, a, a prior disciplinary record can, under some cases, be obtainable from a FOIL officer. There's obviously a number of other things we did. We banned chokeholds as a matter of state law, though many, po many police departments already did do so. We created a new sort of oversight agency to look gradually at police practices. And we also created the attorney general to be a, the independent prosecutor in a case of a death between a civilian and a police officer. Um, you may know that such a death occurred in New Rochelle recently, but that occurred before we passed this bill. What the governor will do, I do not know. But we felt that was appropriate to take it out of the hands of the DAs locally and to make it a, um, a product of the state attorney general's independent investigation and prosecution. Charlie, um, may I just ask a question on that? Yeah, sure. What happens, uh, who is the investigating agency if there's an officer involved shooting involving the state police and a civilian? I believe that that automat I believe that automatically goes to the attorney general as well. I will double check. I believe I'm correct about that. That is, that is a potential conflict as opposed to the- Yes, I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, we did also pass a bill which the, for the state police to have body cams. That's one where we did have some you know, oversight and control. Now, after we pass these bills, um, you, you know, I, I suspect you know, the governor issued an executive order regarding local police departments requiring a very, a, quite an extensive community-based process with the police department of uh, engaging with a range of stakeholders in every community, reviewing the police policy, uh, trying to move towards a best practices model of every department. And he said, um, under this executive order, which was issued two days ago, the municipal policy basically has to be adopted by the board or the trustees or the municipal governance, sent to the division of the budget. And basically division of the budget can condition receipt of future appropriated state or federal funds upon the filing of the certification. So you have to go through a process, which is an extensive process. And uh, I'm sure your council will advise you and the associations to look carefully at what the executive order requires because it, uh, it's different than the bills that we passed in that that's a much more grounds up community-based input into the police department policies and procedures. Just something on your plate for the coming. You do, you do realize that we don't have a police department. I know, you don't, <laughs> but some people, you know, it's still an issue that cuts across in the sense that you're gonna, you as local representatives will hopefully be engaged in the conversation with all of the police departments that potentially impact uh, the residents. So, you know, I don't know exactly how it's going to be carved up uh, going forward, who will be on these panels, but I, I do think it's worthy of review. I know you don't have your own department. Um, I do want to mention um, some of the changes that have come about today that were important to me. Um, the ability to visit in group homes and hospitals. In group homes, really, the, ability, the lack of visitation for three months has been a real impediment for many family members and for people in these group homes. So um, I've been pushing for that. And there also will be hospital visitation under certain rules, not yet nursing homes, which I believe we should move towards quickly. Uh, I think it's, it's very challenging to not have visitors. Um, 
I think you know, uh, most of you probably follow what the governor says every day in terms of the changes in uh, groups in, in the third stage, which we're not here in, yet in Westchester, we are going to be able to have larger group settings and you know the ability for houses of worship to get to a bigger stage, I think is a very good development. So we, we in the legislature do have a daily call with the governor's office. And I know you have a call, many of you with the county, but to the extent that you believe that issues should be raised with the governor's office, don't hesitate to ask me to raise them, either for specific businesses, policies. We don't always win. So what else is new? But we bring them up all the time and we're persistent uh, with the governor's office about the things that we believe are essential. So um, in sum, on the money issues, our focus is trying to get as much as we can from Washington. And then assuming we don't, I think we will be looking at revenue issues only because it's impossible to contemplate the cuts of the scope the governor has talked about. So there are some revenue issue, revenue proposals on the table. Um, but I'm very concerned about cuts and I think we all have to be quite concerned about that. And uh, the second thing is on these issues of just generally demonstrations about uh, racial justice and our relationship with our police departments. I hope we continue to work towards a very productive conversation in Westchester, which I think the demonstrations in Westchester have been peaceful, have been coordinated with the police and um, hopefully have been safe in terms of social distancing. I won't get into all the other, there's a lot of complicated issues, but I'll stop there. Thank you. Um, Senator, I have one, one question, then I'll, I'll open it up to the, um, to the council. Every year we apply through CFA for state grants. Um, that's been delayed this year. Do you have any idea if the CFA process will go forward this year, or should we not count on it? I, I'm, I'm pretty honest about the fact they seem to be holding on to cash. And so even uh, decisions where they have allocated money, either under a CFA or some other appropriation are being delayed in letting the money out the door. I think you should, proceed, but be mindful that it's going to be hard to get money out the door. That being said, there are things that were promised and there are things that we appropriated and that CFA, which, you know, has been very meaningful in allowing us to move forward on a lot of good projects. I think get your foot in the door and whatever you can get approved and then we'll keep fighting for the money. All right. All right. Members of the council, any any questions for the senator? Oh, you must have covered a lot lot of ground, Senator. No, I wouldn't go that far. But <laughs> um, do we have any questions from any of the staff? Um, Boy. Every, yes. I I did want to ask about additional revenue sources. Has anything been sort of um, put out there and who would be responsible for administrating those? So um, I've been, I was on the group of the Senate majority that um, was sort of anticipating we may need to think creatively about revenue. Um, I've been against additional taxes. I think that's really a problem. That being said, after COVID and seeing the disproportionate impact in our communities and our district of those basically earning under 60,000 compared to those at the very high end, I proposed a two year uh, income tax increase for those earning 5 million or more a year for a two year period, about a 2% increase of which 85% would go through K through 12 public education, 15% to SUNY and CUNY. That's one of the, proposals on the table. There's a number of other revenue raisers. I mean, I happen to favor full gaming downstate in the two places, Yonkers and Aqueduct, that um, if they move to full gaming, I think we could get a lot of money that is not taxes. I know some people have reservations, but we have it in certain upstate places. I think 
we ought not to lose all this money to New Jersey and some people are going to continue to go bet on these games. So there's a number of uh, suggestions on the table. I, I think we're very mindful that we can't impose additional costs on municipalities. You already have a shortage, um, you know, very tight budgets, if not layoffs, we're, we're very mindful of that. And I think the trouble is we only have this very short window once the governor puts the cuts on the table. So that's why we were trying to get our ducks in a row beforehand, but it depends on the extent of the cuts, but I'm happy to go in greater detail on some of the ideas, but nothing has been decided. Have you, have you heard of any developments in the SALT deduction uh, issue? Uh, Jeff, in the House bill, the HEROES Act, uh, that passed the House on a bipartisan basis, it, it, it was removed, but uh, the Senate, which hasn't acted on anything yet, I think it will be an uphill climb. Obviously, that is critical for us, and I think both Schumer and Gillibrand are pushing for it, but uh, I talked to Schumer's office today. I, I, I don't. We need some. We need some friends from some other states to help us. So we don't have it yet, and, we're, and the governor's certainly pushing for it as well as we are. Great. Anybody Thank else? You. Oh, I'm sorry. Have there been just to kind of go back to the additional source of revenue? I know for certain local municipalities like the hotel tax, et cetera, that has to be approved by the state legislator. Is there any, has there been any discussions about possible sources of income that the state legislator can allow for some of the municipalities or? Well, uh, taxes that already exist, hotel taxes that already exist, mm -hmm. we've tried yeah. to renew. Everything that, that expires, we, we have on a list of must do. I think many of them we did. Um, if there are additional taxes to be considered that are not renewals that a municipality wants to adopt, we should um, look and see if we have a chance. I don't know whether we're gonna, what we're gonna do scheduling wise and go back. I mean, um, I believe we should go back and do what we need to do. And if I have carried hotel taxes before, they're not always popular, but they're such an essential source of revenue and um, but the hotel chains, you know, this is a, they're in a tough position this year. But that being said, if, if a tax exists, in my opinion, we should renew it. But I, I, there may be pushback even on that, given the precarious state of some industries, including, well, every industry, but certainly the hospitality industry. All right. Senator, thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Thank you for yeah. coming thank to you. our meeting. Thank we you. appreciate it. Always a pleasure. You thank you. You're welcome anytime. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll continue with the meeting. Um, we didn't do a roll call. And I will note for the record, Hope, that yeah. all of our council people are present. And you may so note that. Yes, I did already. <laughs> Thank you. You're um, welcome. When I was planning board chair, that's how we used to call the roll. So, oh, okay. Uh, that's a good one. I mean, you want me to call it, or you're okay? No, 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 no. Like. Don't have to mm -hmm. call. It. Say, everybody's here. Okay, great. Um, anyway, um, May I have a motion and a second uh, for the adoption of the minutes of May 19th, 2020? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Who seconds? I'll second. Who's that, Tommy? Yep. Tommy. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 No one's opposed. Um, we have a resolution. I hope this is your resolution. Adoption mm -hmm. of the new LGS-1 schedule. Um, for New York State ICON, I, 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 right. Archives. 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 Um, uh, can, can you just state what this is? Um, mm -hmm. I read it. You're replacing a lot of old, old schedules with right. All the, the prior schedules, which we have been using. Uh, this is a new schedule for um, all New York local government records. It's called the LGS 
dash one, and it will supersede and replace all former schedules that we have been following. Uh, the state is revising and consolidating all the prior records, retention and disposition schedules and um, issuing one single and comprehensive right. retention schedule for all. So right. therefore, we, in order to, it will be available from what I understand on August 1st, but before we're able to use it, we have to adopt it. And that's what I'm asking for. No, the, the we have to adopt that. it mm -hmm. when we haven't even seen it. I know. Right? <laughs> but we could have held it over till next month, but you. But that well, still wouldn't do any good because it goes into a fact order first. We haven't seen it. But mm -hmm. we will adopt it. This, this essentially, we've always referred to it as the MU1, correct? That, that's that been the basic one. Right. That was this the last replaces, one. Mm -hmm. This replaces four separate schedules. Right. Oh. And it, it, it reads that the local governments must adopt the LGS1 prior to utilizing it. So. <laughs> All right, so let's adopt it. Um, mm -hmm. May I have a motion and a second, please? I'll make the motion. Oh, I'll let Lindsay make the motion. <laughs> I'll, I'll make second. The motion. Right. <laughs> Lindsay makes Thank it. Thank you. Jill mm -hmm. seconds it. Please call the roll. Right. Mm -hmm. Councilperson Jill Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Lindsay Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Pamela Jaffe? Yes. Councilperson Thomas Nardi? Yes. And Supervisor Gary Zuckerman? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Hope. Thank you. Um, the uh, next resolution is a resolution in support of racial justice. Um, I don't think I have to really go over what's been happening in the world today. We are all quite aware of it. Um, and this resolution uh, affirms that we are a welcoming community and affirms that we believe that no person shall be denied the equal protection of the laws. Um, and I'll just read the resolve clause. Um, Resolved that the town council of the town of Ride is hereby resolved and reaffirm its commitment to inclusivity and the enforcement of any non-discrimination laws and states its opposition to systemic racism affecting black, indigenous, and people of color in this and every other community in the United States of America. And I would just like to thank Pam for <coughs> inserting part of that last clause I had never heard of BIPOC before, Black, Indigenous, and People of Color, uh, which is designed to be an inclusive term uh, that, that goes um, beyond um, just the African-American experience. And um, Pam, if you want to, you can explain more. Uh, Pam sent me an article on that, which I found very, very useful. You want to say anything about that, Pam? At two in the morning, Gary gets a text from me on this one. Um, this is something that within my own industry, I've been very involved with for five years, and that's bolstering inclusivity. Um, and so in the wake of everything that's happened, I reached out to Gary and the council. I'm like, could we please make a statement? I think it's really important for the town to adopt even though we last year adopt, adopted a very strong anti-hate statement, a very positive pro-inclusion statement. Um, one of the important pieces of this, as Gary said, was A, moving away from the term diversity, moving away, you know, because that diversity is almost a separation term in the world today. So inclusion and representation are the preferred terms because that is and folding and gathering as opposed to setting apart. So I feel like in the town of Rye, where Port Chester and Rhineck and Rybrook live so beautifully together and we learn and we grow and we interlace as a really vibrant community, that feeling of inclusion is so very evident. So part of that being, as Gary said, the terminology by POC, um, 
being people of black and um, indigenous and people of color because when you just say people of color there's often a feeling of erasure in, in, um, in culture where you're not including the experiences and the trials of the indigenous people or other races who've come and experienced. So it just does really become more of a universal term. It's a very new term. Um, it's one that we're finding ourselves as many corporations, higher diversity and inclusion, you know, executives and chief executives. That's a message that's become very important across the, um, I'm going to say the inclusion movement and having taken part in the, the march in Port Chester and seeing how beautifully melted our community is. I just want to thank Gary and I want to thank Jeffrey for the statement because it is so very representative of who we are as a town. Thank you. Would you like to, would you like to make the motion, Pam? I would love to so move to. Thank you. Second, please. I'll second. Thank you, Jill. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other comments before well, we go? I, I would like to um, add to the discussion and request that we do add something to either the resolution or continue to discuss this matter further because I think what has happened in the past and what, you know, kind of the mantra has been is that resolutions have been passed, you know, sans any notable action or even you know encouraging the community to kind of make inclu uh, inclusion a part of our daily lives um i would request that we set up even if it's a temporary committee for you know a certain number of months just to discuss how we as a town government can sort of further inclus inclusivity and move forward and make progress um you know I think the resolution is a great place to start, but I think it's a starting point, not a finishing point. And I just hope that, you know, we all agree and can kind of, you know, move forward on this idea. I agree with you completely. Like the first stage of this is listening and then it is action and movement forward. So it would be wonderful to have, you know, start off with a listening committee and find out what we can do to bolster and how to start bolstering you know, this feeling of inclusion in the community. I agree. Um, I don't think we need to change the resolution, but Lindsay and I spoke about this earlier, and I'm in full agreement that we really need to start to take positive steps. And I'd like, um, you know, you, Pam, and yeah. Lindsay, since you brought it up, to co-chair. And I think that uh, the the committee should include members of our staff uh, who are active. Um, I see Nave is right in front of me. Your face mm -hmm. there, Nava, I think would be an excellent person to start with as part of this committee. And you can branch out. And I invite any of the other council people, Tommy, Jill, to be part of that committee um, and move forward and develop a um, you know, a plan under, of course, the auspices of our town administrator, Debbie. So we'll bring you into it as well. Uh, but um, I think it's an excellent idea, Lindsay. Thank you very much. And, um, and we'll go forward with it. Everything thank is open. You. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you, Pam. I think that, you know, as someone of the millennium generation, you know, throughout my lifetime, I've seen these instances, you know, with, um, you know, police brutality, et cetera, and different racial um, tensions come to the forefront. And, you know, we kind of, they blow up and nothing is really taken care of or resolved. So I'm glad to kind of, you know, work towards hopefully creating a more inclusive community and, you know, maybe addressing some of those issues. It's interesting because we don't realize quite how lucky we are. I mean, our village police departments are so fabulous and so positive and such forces in the community, but not everybody has that. So, you know, just this past week at the, or a week ago or so at the parade and the, the rally, 
getting to stand next to the new chief, Rosa Bella, who was such a big part of making that happen. Not every community has a Chief Austin or a Chief Rosabella, and it would be great mm -hmm. to get their thoughts on this, as well as reach out to the, you know, the Joan, Grand Renat Thomases, Louis Marino, the people in the community, to really hear from the people in the community. Not only Porchester, but but also especially Rye Brook and, and Rye Neck as well, Pam. Um, yes, of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, and I think there's a lot of community groups that we can kind of tap into and sort of. Um, you know, maybe explore what their thoughts are, or what they would like to see, or you know, mm -hmm. how we can provide assistance. I, uh, I um, would like to offer that uh, the Tools for Change seminar that uh, the town council uh, agreed to fund in this year's budget is a seminar for high school students specifically to include members of the Rhineck basically all the communities within the town of Rye, Rye Neck, Port Chester, Rye Brook, there's a, um, a sizable contingent of students who participate from the Carver Center. And the, the concept right down to its DNA is to um, involve students of a wide variety of ages from, from eighth grade to uh, senior in high school from all different neighborhoods in uh, diverse working groups to study issues that affect our community. And they pick one topic every year and they go very deep and they collect data and they analyze the data and they make policy recommendations based on that. Um, and I think that this is, this goes direct, the techniques that have been used by Dr. Tobin um, could really inform how we go forward, one of the things that this committee would be to, would work on. Debbie, could we speak more with Dr. Tobin? This is something Gary and I have been texting about. And he's funny because he's like, maybe you should leave school matters to another member of your household. But I think <laughs> change starts with, don't laugh at me, it's true, he's up there. Um, change <laughs> does start with the youth. And like Lindsay said, she is a millennial, I'm an Xer. I feel like we made giant leaps and the millennials are making giant leaps, but I have a Gen Z in the house and she is passionate and her ideas are bigger than I could ever conceive. And it's in that group of people, we're gonna see a whole new world come about. So if we could somehow bring those communities together for a vibrant exchange of ideas, we as adults could only learn and move forward from it. So I'd love to, get together with Dr. Tobin and just come up with, you know, more strategies and more opportunities. I, I've, I've known Dr. Tobin now for um, many years without counting on my fingers, probably more than 10. And I think that he would like nothing less than to participate in this in a full throated way. Mm -hmm. And just to add to what That's Pam more. said, and to understand that we do have great resources, which are young people. I thought maybe one of the things we can do or an idea I have floating in my head is to encourage our young people um, since, you know, what happened to Mr. Floyd that time while he was on the ground has become so symbolic, um, about eight and a half minutes more than that, that we kind of encourage or dedicate some time and ask all of the students, not just those who are involved in Tools for Change, to set aside a certain amount of Day, time during the day, that eight and a half minutes to come up with different things that they can do to sort of serve the community and uh, improve our situation, you know, as far as inclusion, et cetera. All of these are excellent ideas. And I mean, there, there's just a wealth of ideas coming out from just the, the, the few minutes that we've spoken about this. So I think we There's really need to move forward on it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, I think this is great. I think it's fantastic. Um, so let us do it. And let us vote on the resolution first. So mm. Hope, would you like to call the roll? Surely. Councilperson Jill Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Lindsay Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Pam Mola Daffy? Absolutely. Pamela. <laughs> Uh, Councilperson Thomas Nardi? Yes. And Supervisor Gary Zuckerman? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, everybody. That was a great discussion. Um, 
our reports. Our assessor is busy doing grievance day. Um, and uh, I think by next, next month's meeting, she will have a complete report for us. Um, um, Camille, Crawford Park. Sorry. Camille? You're on mute, Camille. Okay. I'm sorry, I had to unmute myself. <laughs> okay, Crawford is coming back to life, I'm happy to report. Um, I am in the process of signing five multi-event contracts. Uh, multi-event contracts, um, an example is we have signed a company called 3D uh, Lacrosse, and they have signed up for a series of um, afternoon coaching sessions for uh, students in our area. Uh, we have two art classes. One will be in the pavilion. One will be in the art room itself. And we also have two different yoga classes um, that have signed. So we are getting, I'm also getting a lot of inquiries, just checking availability on dates, moving into the fall. So it appears that, you know, people are very anxious to get back out to what we used to do. And, um, you know, I think with the park open now, we're gonna see, with the, um, I'm sorry, playground open, we're gonna see a lot more activity than we have seen in the past couple of weeks. And um, we are also having conversations, nothing is, is in stone at this point, um, but we are having conversations with the Rybrook uh, Parks and Rec they are looking into some sort of a, um, I hesitate to use the word camp because it's not, but they're looking into various types of activities um, with various ages of children. So they, a lot to go through yet, but a work in progress. And it looks like we're gonna be able to have some youthful activity at Crawford throughout the summer. So we're so pretty happy about that. Our, our, our mission of being busy all the time is beginning to yes. take shape. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank I you. A, I got a question. Now, you're going to start doing classes inside the mansion? Mm -hmm. We're allowed to by the state to start, start having inside? Well, yes, we are. And um, we are also being very, very cognizant of the size of the class. So, for example, the, um, the class that's going to be held in the art room will be, for now, eight children. Okay. Uh, and we know we can keep them at a socially acceptable distance. And the other um, point that comes into play when we have these, these students is if they're siblings, we ha ha could have that much more because yeah. they don't have well, I, I don't have a problem. I, yeah. I, I, I'd like to see the mansion be opened at this point. Yep. You know, and mm -hmm. start getting some revenue and people enjoying the mansion in the park once yeah. again. Tom, yoga yoga is being held in the great hall downstairs where there's plenty of room. Yeah. We're also doing the other yoga class outdoors in the pavilion mm -hmm. where there's plenty of room. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're very cognizant of the distance uh, rule. No, no, I realize that. I was more concerned about inside the mansion if we were allowed to and how you're working that. But I think it's great because I really yeah, like I mean, to... masks are mandatory. Anybody that comes to see the mansion or anybody that is in the mansion other than Vic and myself <laughs> will always have a mask on. So we're being very careful. Now, as careful any, as we any, can be. Any word on when we're going to be able to open the playground? It's oh. open. Oh, it is open. Open. Governor, yeah. um, so the governor's, the governor's order came through on uh, last Friday. Okay. And uh, the playground was open on Sunday. Good. Thanks to, uh, thanks to Vic good. and Matthew Garofalo, who both worked on Sunday. But still with masks and social distancing, correct? And, re and regular yes. cleaning of the equipment. I mean, even for our yoga classes, for example, um, the, the inst we spoke with the instructor and the, the, the ruling is at this point, the people that are coming in for yoga must be wearing masks. When they get on their yoga mat, which is six feet apart from their neighbor, 
Yeah. They can take it off. Take it At the end of the class, they need to put it back very, on. Very, so. very difficult. It's very difficult to do anything strenuous wearing a mask. I can tell you from yes. experience at work. Yeah. Very hard. I'm not an exercise person, <laughs> but but my physical. Yeah, we, we know that. Here. We know that, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Yeah, they don't have to wear it while they're working out on their mat. But after yeah. that, we ask that they they put them back on. And Victor has a guidebook from the yeah. uh, from the yeah. state yeah. that is, I think, twenty seven pages long. Correct, Victor? Yes, it as, is. Um, as to how to clean all the equipment and how to do every, how to do everything else through the, all the phases. Um, it's the New York State. <laughs> Recreation Association. Cool. And okay. it's a 27. If you'd like it sent out to all of you, we'll send it out to all of you. It's very thorough, it covers everything we do. Okay. And is that specific to the entire mansion or just? It's specific to everything. Everything yeah, we do parks. at Parks and Recreation, yeah. including so events, including you know parties, including uh, gardens. Um, They're very sports, specific. Gardens, everything. They cover everything. Yeah, would love to see that. Yeah, we'll I think, we'll send Debbie, I think you should, Debbie, send it out to all the council people, please. Do you wanna... I'm, I'm just glad that we're starting to be able to open open up more now. Well, you know, let's as long as we it. stay careful. And make sure, make sure that make sure the town attorney has a copy too. Yes. <laughs> Vic, you want to do a quick movie update? Huh? You want to do the quick movie update? Um, oh, the movies, the movies. The movies. Um, Kim and uh, Lindsay, um, we discussed this, I'm talking probably two months ago. And we've been, I've went out and measured areas out in the park to get an idea of where we could possibly fit people, how many we can max out at, how many we need to break even with, how many, you know, the whole thing with renting, with purchasing, uh, movie stuff. Um, I've come up with two different areas. Uh, one is in front of the mansion, which is that big area um, outside the circle, the paver circle. Um, we can actually put a big screen there. And what I've done, and I've told Gary and Debbie, is I figured out 10 by 10 foot boxes to sell to people with six foot spaces in between throughout the whole prop, whole area. You bring your own chairs, your own blankets, your own, and we will escort you to your area and you'll have the six feet all the way around you. And we can get out in that front lawn, 90 boxes. So that would be 90 families or 90 of whatever and Camille and I were talking on like $25 or $35 a box. And, you know, it, it, it would cost us $1,700 to rent everything and have somebody run it for us from a company. And if we did it at the $25 thing with the 90 boxes, which I don't think we'll have a hard time selling, we'd end up uh, making about 400 bucks. And then we can do a concession or we can bring in an ice cream truck or, you know, whatever. But uh, we've, we've thought it out pretty thorough, but would love to hear you and Lindsay uh, get involved and, you know, think it out a little more. No, I, I love the food, the food uh, bank connection. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, another idea I had was possibly going to a local restaurant since we do have that beautiful catering kitchen. Um, and maybe even offering it up to them, you know, at no charge, some of our local restaurants that are struggling to stay open at this time and allowing families to order almost like a picnic um, or a box mm -hmm. dinner um, to enjoy during. Yeah. yeah. So, um, that's even something I've seen that we've got the little, I don't know what they're called, mobile carts, but you could mm -hmm. almost have that delivered. So yeah. have someone bring it from the kitchen to the person's allotted spot, drop it off, and that way you're still keeping pe people contained. I think it would be a way to attract families to go out there. I think it's kind of, you know, for families who have been trapped inside and quarantined, um, it would be a nice night out. Um, parents don't have to worry about cooking, and then it's kind of a win-win because we can help a local yeah. business, 
you know. The only which, danger, the only danger with it is if it rains. <laughs> that would not, that would well, we not can do be a rain good dates. experience. Rain, rain dates. Rain, rain dates. The uh, rental company does allow a rain date. Yep. Cool. All right. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, I, that sounds real good. And there were also a number of uh, local restaurants that this meeting. Yeah. each have a food truck. So that would be another way um, for people to either pre-order or have a variety, but we'd still be supporting our local restaurants. So, What, what about if you had it like, um, if you had it and you had it like an hour and a half or two hours earlier and have a few food I'll tell trucks? You and this way, people could have a choice of what they if the, what, what they would like. Right, right. Sort of like tailgating, but yeah, right. yeah. Right. No, that's that's a great idea. Right, we're going to give us the permits. That way, they could eat. That way, let's, they could eat before they see the movie. No, we don't need a permit. Right, going this, to give us a permit. permit. This, this is Crawford Park. It's not. It's okay, not. Hard. Hard. No, no permitting. I've tried to do this in the past. It's tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's cool. Great. That's the Camille, that's, that's, that's terrific. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. We looked at a calendar, uh, Vic and I looked at the calendar today and we sort of penciled, not knowing what everyone else's schedule is, but we kind of penciled in July 25th with the thought that uh, the week before that, based on the governor's phases, it will be okay. back to right. everyone can, what is it? What are they calling it? All out, phase yeah. out. Phase out. No. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hold my hat on that one. Mm. I know, but you know, it's I a think start. phase three is gonna be a while. It's a start. Mm. So. Okay. Right. Also, it's group to twenty-five. So if we get there, it's great. Yeah. It's done, tight, Gary. God bless Thank you. you. <laughs> too. I would have muted it, except I don't know where the mute button is. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Okay. Um, With all my dogs, I'm getting to know the mute button real well. Yeah. <laughs> my poor dog is very confused because I'm at the dining room table, but I don't have food. So that's <laughs> why <laughs> <laughs> so I had to pick him up. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Camille. Thank you, Vic. Uh, reports. Dave. Okay. Thank you, buddy, David. You have a report uh, for us, David? Yes, uh, Hope should have provided the uh, receivable report. I have it. Okay. Thank you, so, Thank you for the update. In, in the month, I you know that I, in, You know that I go over it with a fine tooth comb, right? At some point you do, and then you ask me questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is the may 31st report but on this report there's there was three redemptions which actually took place in june there was um one on schedule the in rem list on schedule b1 which was hasico um avenue which was just land and then there was two uh on schedule c1 which was 741 halstead and 581 locust avenue so we, we had uh, three redemptions, uh, if we're including the first few days of June on here. So we've at least we've got some payments. And normally this is a very quiet time anyway. So, um, and I know you've been working with Jeff on the, uh, the status of the redemption. And we do have another class that's going to be coming up. Um, you know, July 31st, the, the class of 20, which currently is a little bit larger. So we'll, you know, but it's still a little bit of waste. It's getting closer. And, and as it gets closer, when Nick sends out his default notices, we'll get some payments in, right, Nicholas? Hopefully, yes, I hope so. Hopefully, yes. Yeah, yes. we have- You could use the uh, cash. We, we have on the Schedule C, <laughs> which had a redemption date of June 5th. We have one, we have five of the remaining 15 um, answered or brought in order to show cause. And we have four uh, that Jeffrey will be preparing a final judgment of foreclosure that will eventually 
uh, move us to sale, hopefully uh, later in the summer. And uh, there are several on that list that, that will be slipped into the next list that you just referred to, David, um, uh, for redemption on that upcoming list. And um, we're moving forward. So the only other change I just wanted to mention, which is something uh, that Gary and I spoke about, was uh, on, on the schedule of B and C, uh, I did refer Actually. to, I, I did refer to when, the, what the taxes were. Uh, so if you look at Schedule C, it's 2016 taxes. When the lien was, the liens were filed, uh, which was 10, 19, 17. And then 21 months from when the liens are filed, they're actually in REM eligible. So as of 731.19, they met that 21 month period. So that's, that's. Um, All right. All right. The only thing I would like you and Nick to do is double check on the lien dates to make sure all those lien dates are correct. Uh, you know, if, a lien, if somehow we misfiled a lien, we should know that so it'll go into the following class. But otherwise, let's, let's make a, uh, an effort to, to reconfirm that all of those uh, lien dates are correct. And the same thing for the upcoming class that uh, you just referred to. I think there are about 25 properties on that. So we want to make sure that uh, those, those lien dates are correct so that when they go in rem eligible, we can uh, begin our process properly. Okay? Okay. Um, and uh, thank you, David. And, and I did notice on the chart that you put those, uh, the tax data and the lien date, which is very helpful. I appreciate that. Um, the next um, report, Nick, do you have anything else to add? Just want to add that it's time for the village first in payments. They do 30th of June. That's village of Rybrook, village of Portchester. And I do believe the village of Mamaronek, even though we don't collect it, the tax is due June 30th. So that's coming pretty quickly. Money is coming in, but folks, please take a look and make sure you have your bill. If you do not have your bill, it is online that you can download it. Or if not, please contact the office and we will make sure you get a bill. Okay? Thank Nick, you. Please, please, please remind everybody the different methods in which they may pay their taxes. Yes, there's an envelope in there which is being used very readily and I'm happy about that. It goes right into TD Bank. It's a lockbox that the bank has down in Jersey. We get a lot of calls and want to know why our payments are going to Jersey, but that's where the central TD Bank depository is. Or you could go online and pay by credit card or e-check, or you can mail it in the post office or drop it out in front of the building. We have a new uh, lockbox installed out there with a big message on there. You can deposit your tanks, tax payments here and put them in that if you don't want to use the, the post office itself. So we're pretty well covered in how you can get your payments to us. Just please there is, do. There is one, one method of payment that we do not use, correct? Cash. Cash. The we office is closed, so we do not have people do, come in. Right. We do not accept cash. No, who we have not. Otherwise, we pay cash may take their cash to the bank and get a uh, money a order bank or a bring... cashier's check. Correct, and then send that to us or deliver it to us to the lockbox out front of the building and everybody's happy. Right. Thanks, Nick. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and the last report is Hope. The town clerk's report is on file. Do you have anything yes, to is. add? No, I just received a call from um... Rocio and she uh, is she stayed until the last grievance was filed. The cutoff was 8 p.m. and she's locking up the building. <laughs> good. Yes, yeah, so that's good. So, um, so I'll just say this on behalf of Denise. Today was grievance day, and the grievance uh, the filing time for filing grievances ended.
at 8 p.m. or possibly a little bit thereafter if there are people waiting to file. And um, the Board of Assessment Review has appointments scheduled. Um, if anybody listening to this uh, desires, and if they've filed a grievance already and they want an appointment with the Board of Assessment Review via Zoom, uh, they can still go online and request an appointment. And the Board is having Zoom hearings from now through most of the rest of the week and may go into next week if there is a um, desire to have those, uh, those appointments. Can be all done online through the Town of Rye website. I think that basically covers it all. Anybody okay. adding any, need to add anything? I want to thank everybody, all the staff, continuing to perform excellently through this very difficult time. And I, I just wanted to mention one thing uh, to circle back to the movie night thing. Uh, I'm sure Camille and Vic, were, this, that Stanford uh, Nature Center has, um, is, is doing it and is already, I think, booked, uh, sold out for three weeks oh. in the future. So um, there's, there's, that's a great idea you guys came up with, so. Terrific. Gary, you want to mention anything about the bocce court? Uh, <laughs> yes, um, we've, been, we've been considering a bocce court in Crawford Park for some time. Many people are aware of that, that we're considering it. Um, we will be going out very shortly uh, with bid documents. It'll be a first class facility and many local groups have um, spoken to us about the desire to contribute to the cost. So we're very hopeful that this, um, this endeavor will not cost the town anything we're hoping or certainly very little and provide a service to a uh, segment of the community that that um, that plays bocce consistently at a facility in Portchester, which we are informed is uh, is has been deteriorating and uh, is in need of replacement. So um, hopefully we will be able to go forward with that and look for construction sometime in the early fall. Is that correct, Vic? That's right. Yep, that's it. Good. Uh, just one thing for Debbie, eh, Deb? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, uh, David Coy today recorded 31 people using the bathrooms today. The numbers okay. are going up. They're going up daily. And while he was doing that, he started painting the pavilion. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a dual process out of him. <laughs> I didn't realize we were actually counting people using the facilities. We are. Yes. Great. Well, we, uh, you know, the, um, having staff at Crawford is something new. And so um, we've been using the tally counters to make sure that um, we were right sizing the staffing and uh, to, to the demand. So we got, Gary, we have to maintain that only two people go into the bathroom. Right. I know that. So well, I didn't know we were counting totals. I could see <laughs> yeah, we wanted at, to make sure, the time. We wanted to make sure the attendant was worth having out there. Okay. <laughs> but he's also, paint, he's also painting the pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> and his name is not there. Tom Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. Before we adjourn, I just noticed something on the agenda. You have July 20th as the next meeting, and that's a Monday night. Are we switching from a Monday night in July? I don't think so. I think that's a misprint. Okay. I just wanted to double check. Considering that the council meeting is July 25th, I mean, the commission meeting is July 21st. Yeah. So it should be the same. Okay, because it says July 20th here. I just want to make right. sure. 
Uh, let's double check. Can you adjust that, Hope, in the uh, yeah. final agenda? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, oh, yeah. And, okay. And just, just to advise, there is a possibility that the July I meeting may be live. Do you have an appointment or, to? Uh, depending on what the governor's rulings are coming up in the next couple of weeks. Okay. So we may or may not be Zooming on July 21st. Okay. And we may or may not be meeting in person on July 21st. <laughs> so that is to be seen depending on Governor Cuomo. Okay. Um. Um, all right. Do we have any comments from the council people? Sir Jill, anything? No? Hi. Tommy? Uh, just that uh, everybody have a happy July 4th, even though there's no fireworks. You know, have a safe and uh, enjoy the day. Um, I just, Lindsay? Lindsay? Just wanted to say that I had the opportunity today to return to my alma mater, Brian Neck High School. Um, and congratulate all of the seniors that were graduating this year. They had a nice little parade. Um, the Village of Mumaranek Fire Department and Police Department escorted the graduates um, sort of around the campus and they were able to receive their diplomas. Um, and it was really a nice event. And I just wanna congratulate all of our uh, graduating high school seniors and from Rye Brook and uh, Blind Brook High School and Portchester High School. Um, I wish everyone the best of luck. Great. And, and the Rhineck High School people received a proclamation from uh, myself and, and um, Mayor uh, Murphy. So, Very nice. Um, we have until July. Uh, Pam, you're the last one. <laughs> Pam, well, you're I'm, the last one. I'm always chatty. I'm chatty. I just want to say how proud I am to live in the town of Rye. I am so proud of our leaders and your calm leadership. You know, Gary, watching you preside over the Rye Town Beach committee meetings and just everything is calm and it makes sense and you're communicating it well. I get emails and Facebook updates um, and phone calls from Mayor Rosenberg all the time. Um, Mayor Falanca has been fabulous. I actually just want to give a little shout out to Whitney and Renee, who arranged that fabulous um, rally in, in March a couple weeks ago. It's a great place to live. We're really lucky. And Lindsay, you promised me a walk around Rhineck. And once yeah. we can do that, I, I want to get to know, you know, that part of the community even better because it sounds just as fabulous and what a great place we're in. So I would love, I would love to join you on that walk around Rhineck. Yes, definitely. Make sure, just make sure you visit all of the bridges. <laughs> and, <laughs> a lot of work. And the cemeteries. And the cemeteries. I, 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 oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't forget you the can. cemeteries. We got to take it to the cemeteries too. That's, right. That's what I said. Okay. That's well. what all of the bridges in the town of Rye and all of the cemeteries in the town of Rye, uh, except, except for the African American cemetery, are in Rye Neck. So, We're known for our cemeteries and bridges. Absolutely. <laughs> I will wear my walking shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. And uh, I just want to wish everybody a good 4th of July. And I wish everybody remains safe and healthy as we continue to plow our way through this uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Ah. Uh, luckily, thus far, uh, most of our staff and people and their relatives have been remaining healthy, and I hope that it, it continues on that way. So, thank you all, and with that, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All of, uh, second? A second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We'll see you all next month. Okay. On the 21st. And, uh, <laughs> on the 21st. Right. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Happy 4th. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.